you're new here, my name is Kale. I'm a surfer and a filmmaker, and here you'll find all sorts of epic surf content like tutorials to help you surf better, important reviews, and more. So subscribe down below and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. <laughs> As we progress as surfers, we are naturally drawn to the challenge of bigger waves and the allure of powerful oceanic swells. With a recent run of big waves here on the east coast of Australia, I found myself a little unprepared for many of the waves on offer for the apex of the swell. I ended up surfing some great waves. Solid, but definitely not huge. I saw many intermediate level surfers who also paddled out, but struggled with the conditions. And this tutorial is for them. I guess it's quite a natural thing to be nervous or intimidated in big surf, because largely as on land creatures and being out in the ocean, having a six foot wave mow us down, we can feel a little bit out of our comfort zone. But it is something I think you can overcome. This is particularly relevant to me because I have a heart condition which developed when I was younger, which can be triggered from being held under in big surf or being short of breath. So this is actually quite a relevant video today uh, and very pragmatic in terms of its application in real life. I'm gonna share with you the same tips that helped me become a lot more comfortable in big surf. Before we go any further though, I wanted to make a quick announcement about my new Patreon page. It's a membership style setup where for a small cost per month, you can access multiple exclusive surf coaching analysis videos every single week from me and my clients. Observing these videos provides invaluable insights into common surfing mistakes and how to fix them to improve your own surfing too. There's also live stream Q and A's and more. So check it out at the link in the description below. The first thing that we need to talk about when it comes to surfing bigger waves is safety and sensibility. And I know those aren't the most sexy things to talk about straight away, but they're very important. If you are thinking about paddling out in surf that is big, it's important that we ask ourselves, am I pushing myself sensibly a little bit at a time or does this surf too greatly exceed my own abilities? <music> There's no point paddling out in big surf if you're freaking out and totally uncomfortable. In fact, if we jump back to science here and what is potentially the very reason we all surf in the first place, flow state, we actually won't achieve it if our abilities are too greatly exceeded by the conditions. Flow is achieved when there is an appropriate balance between the conditions and your skill level. If we push the conditions by a very general figure of let's say 10 to 15% past our comfort zone, then we might be able to find a balance between feeling confident in flow, but also challenged at the same time. At this point, there is less physical risk in surfing bigger waves. Kookaburras. It's actually really important to spend some time assessing the conditions when they're solid so that you can paddle out informed, confident, and prepared. Which brings me to my next point. One of the most important things that you can consider when paddling out in big waves is board choice. I talked a lot about board selection in my last video and in my online course, The Ultimate Surfboard Buying Guide. In general, you guys know that I mostly recommend fishier shapes and outlines as your go-to surfboard. But in big waves, there's an exception. We must ask ourselves here, are we trying to generate speed in this surf, or are we trying to control or harness speed during this surf? In big waves, it's all about control. If we compare my own boards here, a smaller everyday board and my bigger wave board, let's consider the differences. Notice how this board on the right here is straighter in its overall outline. The tail is swallowed and the bottom of the board, the concave, is very flat for maximizing speed generation. 
With this straightness comes a sacrifice in control, however, which is why the board on the left is probably a better choice for bigger waves. It's a rounded tail, it's constantly rounding around the shape until it reaches the nose, and all this sinks into the water more, offering more control, but sacrificing a little bit of that speed. So in general, those sharper rounded outlines, that typical surfboard shape, are gonna be more appropriate for bigger surf, whereas our flat, straighter lines in those fishier boards are more appropriate for smaller waves. Okay, so we've got the right board, check. Now we have to get used to one massive difference between smaller waves and big waves, and that is the speed at which everything occurs out in big surf. Bigger waves naturally break faster than smaller waves because they fall from a higher point and with more force. One thing that's very hard to show on video is the sheer speed and power that you feel whilst out in big waves. It instills in us a sense of awe, but also nervousness and fear. However, if we allow that fear to take over, it'll compromise our technique, which is sorely needed during big waves. If we hesitate with our paddling, or we simply maintain that slower, easier pace that we might take in small waves, we'll end up paying the price. In big waves, the best of the best surfers all paddle super fast and commit 100% to each and every single wave that they want. If you are pulling back or trying to pop up too early because the pocket of the wave looks too steep, it can be the worst situation possible. So keep this in mind. If you can't commit, head in. It's not your time yet. But I guess the very idea of surfing a big wave, catching a big wave, can instill that fear, that hesitation in someone whilst they're out there. So how do you actually push past that? How do you stay out in the surf and commit to catching a wave? Well, that's where I wanna introduce you to my three, two, one, go principle. When I was still surf coaching beginners, I'd often find that they'd be a little nervous in certain conditions. Many pulled back when trying to catch waves and ended up compromising their entire session with me once their confidence faltered. I found that by paddling out with them and counting them into the wave, it served as an external accountability factor with their commitment. As they paddled in, I called three, two, one, go! And it seemed to have a good impact on their commitment. Some surfers naturally have this inner dialogue happening already when they see me and take off on some serious waves without hesitating. And to be honest, it's so inspiring to see. The common thread with those surfers who commit on their own is that they have a three, two, one mindset in place already. Now, how do they get that mindset out in the ocean already? I don't know, but I think it is something that we can work on and we can work on it through practice, by pushing ourselves, by developing and cultivating step-by-step step more confidence in the ocean. Over time, those three-foot waves, which previously used to scare us, will actually start to feel like two-foot waves. They might even start to feel like one-foot waves. They'll feel easy, they'll feel inconsequential, and thus you will feel confident. One final factor that I wanna talk about when surfing big waves is the breath. By consciously controlling our breathing throughout a session, we can stay more centered and calm, and I guess more tangibly speaking, oxygenated to deal with any potential hold downs. Find a breathing rhythm as you paddle. Use it as an anchor as you sit there in between waves and then continue to do it even as a wave approaches and you begin to paddle for that wave. I find that this really calms people down and brings them back to the moment, which we know is a good stimulus to bring them into flow state. So breathe and you'll get through it. Well, I hope this one helped you out, guys. Sorry I've been a little bit delayed with videos recently. I've been so busy at the moment. I just launched my documentary, The Longevity Film, on iTunes worldwide. I'm working on a TV series. I just launched the Patreon account. Um, I'm doing a van renovation series that on my own van that I'm moving into, which I'm going to release here on YouTube. It's all been a little bit crazy, but I'm doing my best to keep up, and I appreciate your patience. Remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and comment down below what resonated with you the most. What else are you working on in your surfing career? Remember you can join me on Instagram as well at Kales Broccoli. I look forward to seeing you here, there, everywhere, wherever suits you guys. Thank you so much for watching.